Hi, welcome to Operation Fishing Freedom. I'm Ben Olson. Join us today on the Gulf of Mexico as we fish with John Hitchens, Army medic during the Vietnam War. Military veterans protect our great nation. Pro anglers Jay Garstecki and Ben Olson made it their duty to honor our heroes. They want to share soldiers' stories. The perfect place to carry out this mission, a fishing boat. Get ready to launch Operation Fishing Freedom. Brought to you by Great Clips. It's a symbol universally known. Since 1864, the Red Cross represents protection. In times of war, a Red Cross on vehicles or buildings signifies protection from military attack on the battlefield. It's a symbol Vietnam veteran John Hitchens knows well. I started off with a Red Cross on my helmet you know, when I was 18 years old, and you know, I was going to retire when I was 63 years old with a red cross on my hat. But on this sunny day in Marco Island, Florida, it's about giving back to John. Morning, John. Good morning. You ready to get out there? I'm ready to go. It looks like a beautiful morning. We're going to go see if we can get some sharks today. Oh, good. I'm excited about that. Awesome. Awesome. Let's go. Okay. Today we share the boat with John, not only to fish for sharks, but in the hope that he'll share his story, a journey that took an 18-year-old Army medic to the Vietnam War. Get that all, try to get it all wet. Does that remind you of transfusions right there? I've seen worse. <laughs> John was born and raised a Minnesota boy. I grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, kind of a blue collar working section of town where all your northeast. northeast like most minnesotans his family loved the outdoors john loved fishing i spent a lot of my summers up in canada um, when, when i was growing up fishing and, 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 and water skiing and things like that an outdoor kid with strong patriotic roots roots that weren't american but in fact canadian my dad is canadian my dad came down during world war ii and, and joined the american navy uh, and at that time, uh, he had to like take the oath of loyalty and, and he renounced his Canadian citizenship and became an American. When John turned 18, like many high school graduates, he tried to find a path in life. You know, all your parents were veterans and parents didn't have money for college. So, you know, if you were a guy and you weren't sure what you were gonna do, or, you know, the military was kind of that first option graduated from high school and went into the Army. It was a volatile time, and not everyone signed up for duty. When I was growing up, in, it was an unpopular war. There were people going to Canada, you know, to resist the draft. Well, that was not an option for me. You know. John shipped out for basic training right after high school. So then they sent me to Fort Knox, Kentucky, and I went through basic training there. And then I went to Fort Sam Houston, Texas. That's where they train medics. They train you for a little bit of everything. That's what kind of told you, you know, this was gonna, this was serious, you know, this was serious stuff. And, and so I went through basic training and I went through advanced training and became a medic. And then I went to uh, Fort Benning, Georgia uh, for airborne training, uh, to jump out of planes, uh, parachute training. While John trained in Georgia, the Vietnam War came calling. And then uh, I got orders from uh, when, I, when I was in jump school for Vietnam. And, and initially, I got signed with uh, a unit called uh, Alpha Med, A326 Med, with the 101st Airborne. The 101st Airborne Division was in Quang Tri. John found himself front and center in the Vietnam War. We would stabilize the casualties, and there was a lot of them, uh, a lot, you know, a lot of American, and we also took care of the South Vietnamese casualties that came in and stabilized them. Uh, it was, it was a little overwhelming at first, you know. Yeah. 
Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, Recon Boats, and by Evinrude Outboards. It's a perfect day to share a fishing boat with retired Vietnam Army medic, John Hitchens. The first part of the deal is we gotta get a whole bunch of bait in the box. There are acres and acres of fish all around us. There you go. Go ahead and lift them right up here. Ooh, that's a nice one too, actually. This is, they gotta be about 15 to keep, but look at how beautiful that is. Oh, it really is. Yeah. One of the best things you can do when you're shark fishing is keep catching little stuff. So we'll, we'll put some little rods out while the big rods are out. But then I'll be back here cutting chunks, cutting chunks of those fish we caught earlier and sending those out. And then we have a bag. We'll have some, some dried blood chum. <laughs> Try to keep one clean hand. Current's going out here for another hour. It just will broadcast that chum out. And they'll come a wandering in here and find our lady fish on that big monster there. I've caught crappies this big. <laughs> After all, a boat is the perfect place to share stories. And today is John's first shark fishing trip. The one thing about sharks is there's no bones. They're all cartilage. So they don't have the ability to pump water over their gills with you know, a gill structure but that makes them not very efficient processors of oxygen. So by the time we get them up here to the boat, they're pretty tired. They don't, yeah. they're not gonna jump in the boat, or at least hopefully. To put John on a big fish is to pay respect. Respect to John's service and to his story. A tale linked to one of the most controversial wars in American history. When he first arrived in Vietnam, John marched with the 101st Airborne Division as an Army medic. But within months, he began to fly on helicopters, assigned to the 326th Medical Battalion. Dust off is, is, is the medic helicopters that go in and pick up the wounded and bring them back out. I wanted to go out on the helicopter, so I just basically uh, kind of made a job for myself, you know. I would, I would volunteer to, you know, if they had to go fuel up the, the helicopters, I was willing to go do that, you know. They were doing what they call milk runs where they were going for supplies or things like that, I'd do that. Casualties easily outnumbered the medics and doctors. The commanding officer, Major Rooley, the doctor, he'd, he'd had what he called the see one, do one, teach one method, you know. You, he, you'd see one and then... Yep. You do one and then you teach somebody else because there were so many casualties yeah. coming in, he didn't have time to train everybody how to do things. So I got a partial amputation and I'm gonna have to cut it off. Have you have you done one of those before? And I'd say, I've seen one. And he'd say, Well then it's your turn to do one. <laughs> you're up you know, you're up on the do teach one. one so. Today it may be John's turn to catch one. There you go, just start reeling. Crank. Hard, 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 hard. Crank, 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 crank. There you go. Perfect. Oh, he's taking out line. Oh yeah, you got plenty of line, don't worry about that. Look at that, look at that run. Gah. It's just so awesome when you, to feel the power of these saltwater fish is just incredible. Oh, oh go, go, like go, he, he broke, he, this is a, this is the problem. We'll get another one though, I mean that's, that's well, awesome to have fish oh, there. That was great. That was great. <laughs> no matter, John's always ready for the next challenge, a talent he learned early on. There were so many casualties and there were so few people to work there. Um, but there was a sign that we had out front on the building that said, uh, we treat them, God heals them. You 
couldn't take credit for the ones that I saved them because then you have to take responsibility for the ones that you couldn't save. But the Red Cross was the ever constant signal that they were trying to help. A lot of times you were just relying on that, you know, that big Red Cross, you know, of, of neutrality, of we're, we're trying to do the right thing here. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, SKB Cases, and by St. Croix Rods. When I was in Vietnam, we used to take the helicopters and fly over to China Beach. Yeah. Uh, Eagle Beach, they called it, with, with, with the 101st, and we'd go swimming. And we'd swim, and then the shark would come in. You'd be, you'd be maybe, you know, 20, 30 feet away from you when somebody goes, shark, and you'd walk yeah. in. And then I came home and saw that movie Jaws, and I was like, what were we doing? <laughs> If you're a U.S. military veteran living in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, or Florida, log on to takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. Let me know if you run out of line, or if you're close to running out of line. This is no lazy day of fishing for Vietnam Army medic John Hitchens. Keep that rod bent. He's getting tired against the drag. Oh boy. It's a good fish, too. Here it comes. Here comes our double line. Here's our leader. Here he comes up. Right now, he'll come up. That's a seven Thank foot you. lemon Thank shot, you. man. Congratulations. Thanks. How are you feeling good? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good workout. Yeah. yeah. John is used to keeping calm. As an Army medic in Vietnam, you learn fast. After 365 days in Vietnam, it was finally time for John to go home. It was March of 1972. It wasn't like World War II where guys fought in the same unit and went over and came home in the same unit. You know, uh, when, when, when you're assigned to a unit, uh, You've got 365 days to go and you start marking them off a calendar, but you know, you, you make some good friends, but you know, once you get really close with people, they got signed and would go home, you know? And, 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 and so I think you kind of feel like you, you came over by yourself and you went home by yourself. But the reliable Red Cross symbol would continue to be a beacon in John's life after military service. When I came home, I got a job with the ambulance service. John took the first national registry test offered in the U.S. He became a paramedic, promoted quickly to operations director of the ambulance services in Minnesota. Out in the ambulance field, when, when you get to a scene, uh, even if you're, you know, because they can't train you to know everything that's possibly going to happen, uh, but the people that called on you expect you to, and they, they need confidence in you. So, so even if you're not sure, you've got to act like you're sure, you know. But sometimes, Life throws curveballs. You don't always see them coming. I started drinking, and, and uh, you know, I, I I drank too much. You know, it 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 it, it got the best of me. Uh, but at the time, I was young, and the consequences of drinking just were like a lifestyle to me. Then the unexpected happened in John's life. When I met my wife, uh, you know, I I thought she was the most beautiful woman. I've ever seen in my life, you know. I still think that, but uh. John and his wife Judy married in 1981. I, I thought, well, I have to quit drinking. But it isn't until you try to quit drinking that you realize you have a problem. John realized he needed help. The place I worked had an employee assistance program, and they encouraged you to go to them and tell them you had a problem. And they said, uh, we have a Vietnam veteran support group out in Fridley, Minnesota. You know, uh, we think this would be a good place for you to go. John found his salvation in a group of Vietnam veterans, 
Harley riders called ARM. That stands for Association of Recovering Motorcyclists. I picked this, this, this dry motorcycle club. They were, they were a power greater than me because they were staying sober and I couldn't. John now rode alongside a group of comrades, people who understood his battles. They helped me uh, not, not only with my drinking, you know, and the desire not to drink, but with a lot of my lifestyle problems and probably the baggage I carried home from Vietnam. If you'd like to thank one of the veterans featured on our show, go to OperationFishingFreedom.com and we'll make sure they get your message. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Optima Batteries, JW Marriott Resorts, and by PowerPole. Retired Vietnam Army medic John Hitchens has lived through military battles and personal battles. Listening to his stories inspires and excites. Tell me what it was like the first time you got on one of those helicopters and flew into that five minutes of it. Oh, look at that. Got one. What do you got? No, that's, you're the line oh. back there. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. He's on this one, he's on this one. Easy on this one. Look at he's that. on this one. You find out why they're called spinner trucks. I see him. There he goes. Okay, just pull all that aside here. And he can't, these guys are all muscle. He can't really reach me. But that one we caught earlier, he can't. He can bite his own tail. Yeah. This one can't really. He's like a little Corvette of sharks. There he goes. <laughs> That's a black nice. tip shark. That's the Corvetta sharks. Those guys are little speed demons, and he jumped himself out before we could get to him. Look at the mess he made of that whole thing. Yeah. But they call those spinner sharks, and you can see why when he was jumping. Excitement, he's used to it. After the Vietnam War, John continued to help people as a paramedic. He went on with life. I was running an ambulance service up in Minnesota, and they were going to start a new service down in Georgia. And I came down for what was supposed to be a three-day consulting project. And I think it was like 30 below in Minnesota and like 65 oh, yeah. when I got to Georgia. There was like a 100-degree difference temperature between the two places. And I went back with a suntan and my resignation in my hand. By now, John and Judy had started a family, son Jack and daughter Christy and the Red Cross symbol resurfaced again, this time in 2007, when John became the disaster director for the American Red Cross in Southeast Tennessee. It just kind of seemed to follow along in those paths in my life. Uh, so I, I was, the, uh, I was the, the disaster director um, of the Red Cross, and I was the disaster director for the, the year that uh, all the tornadoes hit Southeast United States. was the worst disaster the area had seen in decades. Again, John found himself right in the middle of battle. And, and they came in waves, wave after wave after wave, and it just you know, destroyed five, six, seven hundred houses. John's ability to keep cool in the heat of crisis won him numerous awards, including the Emergency Medical Services Lifetime Achievement Award. You know, I've had opportunity in my life to, uh, to, to, to I guess, to help a lot of people but it got to the point where it was time to retire. I retired three years ago. Now retired, John still gives back to family, to friends, and other veterans. So you have your family and you have the brotherhood of your, of your motorcycle group, and, and we talked a lot about giving back. We have a few things we'd like to give you. We have a bunch of stuff here to keep you out on the water. We got a nice oh. tackle box for you. And we also have an inflatable PFD nice. to keep you safe on the pond there. And then just like that vest, we have your very own oh, wow. Operation Fishing Freedom jersey with your name on there. 
That's really nice. Thank you so much. Not it's a problem. A, and then we it. also have this beautiful custom oh. fishing pole here. This has all the branches of the service on it. It says handcrafted for John Hitchens in appreciation of your service and sacrifice. Find a use for that out there on the farm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, I, I have a good life today, you know? I'm happy, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, look, 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 look where I am today, you know? That's, so, you know, I, I, I've got no complaints. I got no regrets. So. We say thank you, John. Thank you for sharing a fishing boat and for sharing your story. Thanks a lot, John, for sharing your stories. If there's a vet you'd like to nominate to appear on a future episode of Operation Fishing Freedom, check out our website.